Now the time has come to define a new parameter that will be more useful than, than delta s universe. Because on calculating delta s universe, we have to deal with delta s of surrounding plus delta s of system. If somehow I can boil this expression down to parameters using only delta s of system, that will make life more easier. Delta s of universe is equal to delta s of surrounding plus delta s of system. Delta s of surrounding we have wrote before as delta h of system minus delta h of system by t of surrounding. This we have got from the basic definition of ds is equal to dq by t and dq if pressure is constant is equal to and volume is constant is equal to dh of surrounding. So ds of surrounding is equal to dh of surrounding by t and dh of surrounding is minus times dh of system. So delta s of surrounding becomes delta h of system upon t of surrounding minus times. So this we have discussed before. We have this expression. We reached to this expression. Now if I multiply it by t of surrounding this becomes t of surrounding times delta s of universe is equal to minus delta h of system plus delta s of temperature would be multiplied here plus temperature of surrounding times delta s of system like this. Now if I multiply the left hand side and right hand side by minus 1 then minus t of surrounding times delta s of universe is equal to delta h of system minus t of surrounding dot delta s of system. This is what we will have. Now this expression minus t times minus t surrounding times delta s of universe gives named as delta g. Delta g g is Gibbs free energy. Gibbs Gibb worked on it. So Gibbs free energy. Now what is free here we'll discuss later but it is some kind of energy called Gibbs free energy. So know the name first and we'll discuss the significance later. This g is Gibbs free energy. Delta g is change in Gibbs free energy. Delta G is equal to delta H of system. Now, if we are having a kind of system, like, like this solution, something is happening in this solution, some reaction is going on, and that is in quasi-equilibrium with the surrounding, then the temperature of surrounding will remain almost constant as temperature of system. So, the temperature of system uh, can be equated to temperature of surrounding. So if it is in a quasi-equilibrium state with surrounding or it is in equilibrium or it is an isothermal process but that has to be equal to the temperature of surrounding then only I can replace this T of surrounding by T of system. So if the reaction is happening in quasi-equilibrium and it is always in quasi-equilibrium state with the surrounding then I can replace T surrounding by T system. So if that is the case, then delta H of system minus T of system times delta S of system. I can write it like this. Now, I do, because all the parameters are of system, this delta H, T and delta S, I can drop this subscript system and simply write delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S with an understanding that this H, T and S are of system and with the understanding that this react this expression holds only if pressure, volume and temperature remains constant. We got this expression, we were able to replace delta H of system, but uh, we were able to replace DQ of surrounding to delta H of system. only by using the fact that pressure and volume are constant. When we derived this expression previously, if you remember, 
we use the fact that volume and pressure are constant. Here, on replacing T of surrounding by T of system, we are assuming that it is in equilibrium. And temperature of surrounding will remain constant. It's not going to change by few reactions in the lab. The temperature of surrounding is constant. And if temperature of system is equal to temperature of surrounding, effectively, temperature of system is remaining constant. So this expression will hold true only if pressure, volume and temperature, all three parameters are remaining constant. That will rarely happen. And if that happens, we'll have this simplified expression. Delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. Now two quick points about this delta G. First of all, delta G deals only with parameters of system. Now we could have worked with this expression as well. Now this expression is as good as the last expression. This, inf this expression gives you all the information that this expression is providing. From here, if delta S of universe is greater than zero, then the reaction is spontaneous. Delta S of, re delta S of universe is greater than zero. This T on Kelvin scale will always be positive that, and you have a minus sign here. That means left hand side is negative. Now, if left hand side is negative, right hand side also has to be negative. Right hand side has to be negative. That means delta H minus T delta S is negative, which is equal to delta G. So from here, we have that if delta G is negative, then reaction is spontaneous because we have defined it this way. We could have defined delta G. We, ha we have defined delta G is minus T surrounding into delta S of universe. We could have defined delta G as T surrounding dot times delta S of universe. In that case, delta G, de G would have been positive if reaction is spontaneous. But this is how delta G is defined. Gibbs defined it like this and Gibbs worked on this. So the way Gibbs has defined that way, that, 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 that way we have to follow it. If we didn't multiply it by minus one, then here it would have been minus delta H plus T delta S. Now Gibbs might not have liking this minus delta H here. So he multiplied to get rid of this minus delta H. So he got plus delta H minus T delta S. But when he did that, this, you got a minus sign here. So because of that, delta G will be negative if reaction is spontaneous. So this is what the bottom line of it is. If delta G is negative, then reaction is spontaneous. Because delta G incorporates delta S of universe in it. And if delta S of universe is positive, the reaction is spontaneous. So if delta S of universe is positive, this quantity is negative and this quantity is delta G. So if delta G is negative, then the reaction is spontaneous. We don't have to forget as we move forward that this expression is valid only if pressure, volume and temperature, all these three parameters are constant and all the parameters are of the system. So it's kind of convenient because you don't have to worry about surrounding anymore. It, all these things are of system. Delta H is of system, T, Delta S, all are of system. So if these three conditions are valid, then the life becomes really easy because calculation of Delta G is very easy because all the parameters, the, we have a standard results. We have data for most of the reactions for all these parameters of Delta H and Delta S. So calculation of delta G at particular temperature will not be a problem. So it will be easy. Okay, now let's talk a little more about this delta G.